Hello, everyone, and welcome to our final webinar in our Navigating Information series. Today, we're going to be focusing on using research, integrating, and synthesizing sources. My colleague, Tricia Clark, is here to provide you with all this wonderful content, and we will have time for questions at the end, both recorded and unrecorded, but you can also put them in the chat at any time. So thank you for joining us today, and take it away, Tricia. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us and welcome. As my colleague mentioned, my name is Trisha Clark. I am the Community College Engagement Librarian here at, at UDC. Today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why you should, well, starting with um, integrating sources and using sources in your uh, research assignment, but more specifically also about why you should cite sources, why citing sources is important, how to integrate those sources into your research assignment, and also the importance of your own analysis or, analysis or perspective um, being in or part of your research assignment. Okay. All right, so why do we cite sources? So you've done the hard work to find sources, you've read them critically, you've evaluated them, and now you want to actually use them in your research. Um, but how do you do that? So what does it mean to use a source in your research assignment? When you use information that you found in your research, what you're actually doing is referencing or citing your sources. So there are some obvious reasons why you as a student should cite your sources. Uh, the first reason is that it is expected in scholarly or academic research. And this goes for the range of research, not just assignments that you've received in your classroom, um, but also in scholarly journals, publications that are peer reviewed, um, that are read by um, and often edited by scholars um, in that particular industry. Those kinds of documents, research documents, um, all are expected to have citations in them, to have sources that are referenced in them. Okay. Um, it does also help you avoid plagiarism. So again, this is in the academic context. Um, when you often get a um, an assignment from a professor, uh, they'll describe what the assignment is about. And then there's often a, a part of that that requires you to have a works cited page or a, a reference list, right, depending on the citation style. Um, your professor may also specify um, using those sources, how, how to use those sources directly in your research assignment. So this is all part of the process. Um, plagiarism is also uh, typically mentioned in the academic context, and that's just using information, uh, research information, content from another source without citing them, right, without referencing them or letting your reader know where you've gotten the information from. So it's typically frowned upon in an academic context, um, both in a classroom and even outside of the classroom. But there are some other, and I would argue better reasons why citing your, your resources, uh, your information is important. So research is a bit like entering into a conversation with a bunch of people. Um, and so imagine that you are walking into a party that's already happening and there are people who are discussing something, um, for instance, the best place to go on vacation, right? So they're talking, um, you walk up, you're listening because folks have already been um, discussing this for maybe a few minutes. And then you listen a little bit and realize that you actually have an opinion on this particular topic too. And as you listen, you find places to interject, um, to agree with someone or maybe to disagree with someone. Someone, maybe you like the Poconos, um, you know, you're somebody who prefers to be in, um, you know, in cold weather or in snow, or maybe, you know, another person piped in and said that they like to, to travel to warm vacations, warm locations for vacations, right? So these are all different perspectives on this particular topic. Um, and it's interesting to think about research um, and particularly presenting research as part of as being part of a larger conversation. And I like to give this context in classrooms too, because I think it actually helps students think about resources, um, you know, articles, books, all of those things, as things that are actually written by people, right, that share information, share perspectives, share opinions, an actual person entering into an academic conversation. So with that in mind, one of the reasons, uh, an additional reason to cite your sources is to give credit where credit is due, right? If you are um, making an argument with someone, a verbal, having a verbal conversation with someone, and, you know, you reference a friend or you reference a family member who um, has also done something, you know, that you've done or, you know, helps you make an argument. So, oh, my cousin also loves going to warm weather places for vacation, right? Referencing outside sources gives credit where credit is due. You actually... Um, mention the person's name, you mention the kind of research they've done or the information that they've created or, or produced that you are um, including or incorporating into your research assignment. It also proves that the information that you're sharing is valid, right? So um, 
although you shouldn't just be mentioning strictly your opinion um, in in your uh, research assignment, depending on the context and the kind of assignment, it you shouldn't just be mentioning your opinion. It's also helpful to have that information backed up with some kind of source, right? Some kind of information, some kind of statistics or um, information from an from additional source. So proving um, proving that the information you're sharing is valid is also an important um, uh, aspect of citing your sources. And then the final reason is to help others follow the path of your research. Uh, we tend to call this citation chaining, particularly in an academic context where um, you'll use the reference list at the end of a document to help you find additional sources, right? Um, it's really great to see, again, what other people have done, what other kinds of research has been done before you. And sometimes um, even you'll notice even as you're doing research as a student, you can find a really great source by looking at somebody else's list of sources. So you've gone from a source that you're reading um, and that they have referenced and you go find that source yourself and you use that in a document that you are writing and creating. So it's really helpful to mention those sources, to use those sources in your research project. All right, so how do we actually integrate sources? So there are three main ways. Um, sometimes when someone says something about a topic, you can recreate that or exactly as they said it. And so this is what we call a direct quote. And you would use a direct quote when you have heard someone say something or you've read something somewhere in one of those sources that is said so perfectly that you can't think of any other way to say it, that you can't think of, of, of a better way to recreate that particular statement or content. I often think of this too as, um, so I'm from the humanities, I'm, I have more familiarity with, with English lit and all that. And I think about quoting directly from um, a source like Poe, um, you know, an author who has, who's a poet or who has a particularly beautiful turn of phrase, right? And you wanna mention that particular phrase, you wanna lift that, um, that sentence or that paragraph exactly as it's written because it sounds really nice or it says, again, exactly what you wanted to say in the context of your research. So using direct quotes can be really helpful. However, you can also paraphrase. So paraphrasing means to restate um, content in your own words. And it's really helpful to remember that quoting and paraphrasing are both important, but paraphrasing really demonstrates that you have an understanding of what you've read, that you've critically read it, you can understand it, and then you can restate it in words that you would typically use um, perhaps in conversation. Although quick note, um, depending on the kind of assignment and you know the, the certain context, um, be sure not to paraphrase using slang, right? Using, um, thinking about the language that you're using as you're uh, presenting a research document, particularly in an academic context, is really important. So then you can also, in addition to direct quotes and paraphrasing, you will often find yourself summarizing um, sources to use in your own research assignment. And, and that means just sort of condensing the information that you've read. I often tell students when we're um, working on a process of finding assignments to look at the abstract. And that abstract is a summary of that entire um, article or document, right? So it's it's short, it's condensed, it gets to the main points, it highlights the methodologies, um, the solutions to a particular problem, or the ways in which the researcher went about finding that information. And that's often at the very top of a, of a scholarly article. So abstracts are summaries, and summaries are really great ways to incorporate information into your research assignment as well. All right, so um, when you find a resource, what you do is to read the source and take notes, what we call uh, critical reading, right? So you underline, you circle, you highlight certain things uh, to make sure that you're understanding what you've read. And again, the importance of that is that when you find um, a source that is really useful for your research project, you read it and understand it so that you can then recreate those sentences or rephrase those sentences or that content in your own words, paraphrasing and using those paraphrases in your research assignment. You also make note of phrases that make the most sense to use as a, as a direct quote. So again, keeping in mind that you want to um, be really mindful about how often you're pulling direct quotes as opposed to paraphrasing. And so really being picky, right? Being choosy about which um, sentences, which phrases, or perhaps which paragraphs you are quoting directly from that source. Um, and then, you know, everything else is, is paraphrased or summarized in some way. Some of the sentences or phrases that stand out to you or work really well to support your research, um, those should be restated in your own words. Um, try to summarize whole paragraphs or sections as you're reading through. Um, so again, you can make notes in the margins, you can underline certain parts, right? So um, summarizing paragraphs or whole sections, sometimes you have certain kinds of documents that have um, 
subject headings. And so maybe you could summarize the subject, the, the um, section of that article, right, to, have, to make sure you have a better understanding of what you're actually reading, and then deciding which pieces that you want to actually use and how you want to use them in your research assignment. And then the last piece is thinking about um, how important your analysis, your perspective is to your research assignment. So no matter what kind of assignment you're doing, whether it is strictly um, an expository research paper where there isn't necessarily an argument being made, or you're working on uh, proposing a solution to a problem, for instance, your analysis, your perspective is, is still very important. So not just your opinion specifically on the topic, but you are, uh, so thinking back to that, um, conversation that you you entered into that group of people that are talking right your perspective is still important um you know it's it's sometimes disheartening to think of making an argument that someone else has already made before but if you think about it your perspective is unique to you specifically so the ways in which you read an article the ways in which you read a novel or whatever other resource that you found um, and think through it and analyze it critically analyze it even down to the specific quotes that you decide to use from that resource as opposed to what someone else would use is really important right so again keep in mind that your analysis your perspective while not strictly just your opinion Opinion, right, but your perspective on a topic is really, really a crucial aspect of any research um, assignment that you do, and then whether that's written or, or otherwise. So your voice should absolutely be a part of that conversation. Okay. And with that, I've come to the end of my presentation. So I'll leave it open for any questions that you may have about integrating sources into your research assignment. And if Good you question. You're welcome. That was <laughs> that was great. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to unmute yourself or drop them in the chat. And we'll also have time for questions unrecorded. I'd like to thank you for attending today. And if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to either ask them now or follow up with us later. We're always happy to help. Absolutely. Hey, Dee. Not seeing anything come in, I'm going to go ahead and end the recording.